Welcome back to Center Valley Talk. Uh, of course, if it's 11 a.m. on uh, Tuesday, the show's artists and authors. And by the way, you may be seeing the show on another day uh, because uh, the good ones like this guest we're going to have in a moment, um, we repeat them over and over because, you know, throughout the days and the weeks because they're so good and fascinating. Now, what we do here, we come here and we talk to artists, we talk to authors. And by the way, stick around today. We're going to be talking to authors from all over the world because um, we learned to do that. Because of COVID, we had to learn something called Zoom, which allows us to do interviews with people um, from all over the world. So um, is there, people say there's nothing to do in Fresno. Drives me crazy because there's something to do every single day. And really good things, really cool things. I've invited our next guest, Marilyn Prescott, to catch us up on some of the things happening in the art world. Am I right so far? Yes, you are. I got your name right. That's the important part. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, um, let me just say a few things about the show. It opens on January 5th and runs through the month of January. Um, it's, uh, it's a retrospective and it's also a silent auction. Now this is um, a show where this is a, oh, it says on our screen, silent auction at Big Garden Gallery. No, Fig Tree Gallery. Big Tree Gallery. Yeah, which is in the downtown area. It's on Van Ness Avenue between Ventura and Mono. Right, oh yeah, Fig Tree Gallery, that's a yeah. cool place. Yes, it is a cool place. It's the coolest place. The coolest right. place. <laughs> uh, it's the oldest um, artist-operated gallery in California. Wow. We've been in operation for over 60 years. Mm -hmm. And you're one of the artists? I'm one of the artists, okay. yes, um, one of 25. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the show, um, it spans over 25 years of art making, um, and it com consists of uh, six different series. Um, the series themselves range from uh, figurative work, which is uh, people, uh, scenes of people that are placed in kind of provocative settings, all the way to landscape and to my most recent series, which um, combines some poems that I've written with the visual images themselves. So, um, is all the art yours? It is all mine. Okay, I yes. didn't get that at first. So. Yes, it's all mine. By uh, the way, there's a catalog. I don't know where they could get this. Um, there's only 35 uh, copies printed, but and I have one. Yes, you have yeah. one, and and um, there will be uh, at least one at the gallery during the um, exhibit. Um, I should say also the final day of the show, which runs through the month of January is January 29th, and because there's too much work actually to be accommodated at Fig Tree Gallery, um, the spillover, if you will, is going to be on the walls at Downtown Artist Gallery, okay. which is just down the block and turn the corner. Is it walkable? And, oh yes, yeah. very walkable. I mean, within two minutes you can be there. Um, now this goes so, almost a whole month of January. Yes, and the operating hours are uh, at Fig Tree Gallery are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from noon until 4. Yeah. So and, you don't have to go on one day and make a decision and bid and be done. It's a whole, you can bid throughout the month. Yes, and you probably should because if you're outbid, um, you'll be required to leave your name and your phone number. If you're outbid, I or one of the other gallery members will call you and tell you, you know, you've been outbid if you want this piece. Mm. Uh, you know, come down and create another bid. Um, By the anyway. way, this book in itself is, I'll keep this forever. Oh, thank it's you. almost like a coffee table book. You have all these beautiful, beautiful images in them. And I didn't know until just now that these are all yours. Yes, they are. Now, um, uh, are we going to look at some of your art? You said? Absolutely, yeah. Let's look at um, the, the first one, which is, I've titled this Boys Will Be Boys. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of my figurative work is, I guess, what you would call kind of on the confrontational mm -hmm. side. Um, these are pretty personal. I did a whole series that I called Family Secrets, and I used family photos, uh, but I kind of um, reinterpreted them, obviously. This is, was based on a photo of my younger brother. And in the photo, he was playing with puppies. And mm -hmm. I've turned the puppies into rats. And uh, then in the right-hand corner, you see a rocking chair that's kind of floating in the air and disintegrating. Um, and I was thinking about that sort of thing as being uh, symbolic of what you might call the furniture of the mind. 
in the sense that we rely on these ironclad notions of how the world works, whether they're correct or not, but then when something, uh, uh, well, serious happens, they have a real tendency to kind of fly up in the air and disintegrate. Mm. So, you know, so much for um, rigid uh, ideas of how the the universe and the world works. I don't want to be too much of an interpreter of art. I like to interpret and tell people what I see, but as an old art history professor, I always try to kind of pinpoint stuff. Yes. Is it surrealistic? You would call it surrealism. Okay. I yeah. got one right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, much of the, all of the body of work, much of it is surrealistic. Okay. I thought um, I saw some impressionism, but I'll bring that up when I see it. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, let's see. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Sacred Fool series, and this is one of them. Okay. Um, I spent a year in Korea in mm. a small little town uh, where I had no TV, no radio. I rarely heard English spoken, and I uh, created this entire body of work that I call the Sacred Fool series. Sacred Fool. The Sacred Fool. Uh, the title of this one is Riding the Wing, and that is a huge feather of a giant bird. Hmm. All of the paintings in this series feature a giant bird, which kind of came to stand for um, a, 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 like a yearning for divine transcendence and spiritual connection. Um, so we'll see a series of paintings. Yes. Like 5, 10, 20? Um, there, well, the ones that are left, you know, bear in mind that these are the ones that have not been sold, okay. so that's why they're for sale. Um, there were originally, I think, ten paintings. I think there are six or seven now. Um, each one of them features a naked female, uh, and she has horns. Horns, okay. Um, sometimes they're small little horns. Sometimes they're complete sets of antlers. And this has nothing to do with Satanism or anything right. like that. Um, I was thinking in terms of um, creating a, a symbol that would stand for the broken connection between us and the earth. Um, this notion that we have as members, most of us members of the Judeo-Christian tradition that we were taught a long time ago that, you know, humans are, you know, the masters of the planet and that we it is ours to do with as we please and you see of course where that's led us yeah. <laughs> and so um anyway uh, so that's what the horn's about um the naked female has connections to um uh the jester archetype the naked fool archetype um maybe one of the most famous of which is uh in shakespeare's king lear mm where uh, the fool tells Lear the terrible truth about himself because the fool, frankly, has nothing to lose, right. is not afraid of the king, and is not really thereby very invested in the culture, which I would say is perhaps true of most females as well. They're right. somewhat less invested, more willing to take risks, and so that woman is hanging from a feather on an enormous bird. <laughs> and transversing the skies. Literally hanging from a feather. Yes, yeah. hanging from a feather. Um, this one here, uh, this one I call Younger Self Before the Winged Gate. Um, likewise, that amb ambiguity, um, we don't know if that bird is there to bless or to rip her uh, flesh to shreds or what. Um, and so, anyway, once again, um, the uh, huge, enormous bird kind of a theme that runs through some of your... Yes, through this series. Yes. Um, now, I uh, told you a lot of our crew called in uh, lazy today, so yes. um, if you think I'm ignoring what she's saying, I'm clicking all the, the pictures and bringing them up and preparing them for, for uh, to appear on the screen here. Uh, tell us about this next one. Yeah, okay. So there are actually also a, a few, um, uh, what you would call, I guess you called impressionistic. Yes. They're kind of impressionistic. This is a whole series that I did um, when I, I lived next to a natural wetlands for quite a while. Mm. And uh, there were all these dying and dead cottonwoods behind my house 
uh, that had been killed basically by these repeated cycles of flooding and drought. And yet they were beautiful. And especially when the sun would shine on them, you can see one in the background of that mm -hmm. painting, um, there would be this just beautiful glistening white um, trunk. And um, so they're idealized. And, you know, I said once at the beginning that my work is very intensely personal. After completing the entire series, which was around 30 paintings, I came to realize that it was symbolic, basically, of a relationship I was in at the time, which was also dead and dying. Mm. So, <laughs> so per, it doesn't get much more personal. It is very personal. Now, um, I think we have one more. Yeah. Um, now, this is from my latest series. And the latest series is uh, one in which I have tried to combine the visual imagery with uh, some poems that I wrote. Um, and I have found it surprisingly challenging. Uh, this is one of the ones that I, I really like a lot. Um, also, you'll notice, if you can get close enough to this image, there's some writing that has been incorporated. I that, yeah. yeah, I would take um, pages from journals and collage them onto mm -hmm. the canvas, and then um, begin to build a painting around that, you know, sort of uh, like a riff mm -hmm. on, you know, the, the feelings and, and ideas that were expressed uh, in the writing. And it just became really energizing. You know, most artists paint from a place of real intense feeling, mm -hmm. and so this would connect with that feeling. Anyway, so I was going to read you um, this poem. Okay. Okay? And the title of the poem is, She Knelt. All through summer she cries freely, dampening his invisible scalloped ed edges of depression. But then she knelt to a lizard on the warm garden floor, touching cheek to ground, best moment of the day. Take a look at the entire painting again, or most of it. I'm not good at zooming from here, but it is beautiful, and the poem is built into the painting. Yes. And you did the poem. That is so beautiful. Tell yes. us again now. This is Big Tree Gallery, uh, retrospective of Marilyn Prescott. Yes. Am I getting it all right? Yes. And uh, it, people could go in and see the art. Yes. In two locations at at the Big Tree Gallery, and then walk around the corner to. Yes, but let me make clear. Um, it's only going to be installed at Downtown Artist Gallery on the last day of the show, which is okay. the 29th. Okay. Um, and then uh, whatever is not installed on the walls at Fig Tree Gallery can be seen then at, at Downtown Artist Gallery. And I should also say, if you come to the show at Fig Tree Gallery and you see in the catalog something that's not on the walls at Fig Tree Gallery, um, we're to call... Uh, Tim Padilla, who might believe you. I know Tim you, Padilla is yes. a wonderful guy. Yeah, yeah. well, Tim uh, will come to Downtown Artist Gallery and show you that painting that you're interested Open in. Open it up. Because he, they are, the spillover is there. Is there, okay. Yeah. Is there one big day, one big uh, the, gathering? The 29th is the big day. Okay, that's the last day? Yes. Okay, and so go preview everything starting on the 5th. Yes. What day of the week is that? Do you know? That's a Thursday. Thursday. It's right around Thursday the 5th. Yeah. Now, by the way, that's Art Hop. That's Art. All Art Hops are the first Thursday yeah. of every month. Yeah, so that's yes. a good day to go to Fig Tree. I try. I say, I'm going to go to 10 places this, this month, and I get to one or two if I'm lucky. <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to start at Fig Tree Gallery this year. Good. Look at these beautiful paintings Thank in you. real life. Because the pictures are, are wonderful. Whoever did the phot photography was incredible, but I bet in real life there's something else. Yeah, well, they're they're better in real life. Now, yes. uh, is there a place to participate in the op auction online? No, there isn't. Um, that would be too confusing. Yeah. Um, but there will be bid sheets for each and every piece in the exhibit at Fig Tree Gallery. Okay. And like I said, if um, if you're outbid, you should you should plan to begin to bid on the fifth, because that'll get it started. Let's not everybody wait, you know, until the 29th. Let's start on the 5th. Um, Sometimes I do this. I will bid on 
not to mess things up, but four or five things that I'm pretty fairly interested in, even though I'm only going to end up with maybe one or two, but they're going to contact me about the other ones. Keep contacting yes, me. Yes, And uh, my favorite, I never end up with. So <laughs> don't just bid on your favorite. Bid on a couple, and, and Thank uh, you. yes. you'll be lucky to get one. I'd love to have a Marilyn Prescott hanging in my home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. We're really out of We went way over time. Anything else you want our viewers to know? Oh, goodness. Um... I don't believe so. Well, just uh, Fig Tree Gallery. Just remember that Fig Tree Gallery. Uh, it's a whole Marilyn Prescott perspective and uh, retrospective. And uh, uh, it's Fig Tree Gallery. Go down there on Art Hop and, and you'll find out more. Thank you. You honored us by coming here today. Uh, really it's an honor for this. me. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be back with more right after this.